It's been a real privilege. I mean, I can assure you uh, it wasn't designed like that. I certainly didn't uh, design it, but um, it just happened. The Tiger Roll story has been told pretty well in recent years, but one of the chapters you might not have heard yet is that of his breeder. I've come to Port Row in County Tipperary, Ireland to meet Jerry O'Brien, the man who bred the legend that is Tiger Roll. He was, he was bred as a middle distance flat horse. And um, he went, uh, he, he went to the Alzeroni stable. And uh, as you know, that was disbanded by Sheikh Mohammed. So for various reasons, and um, the, the, um, the tiger never got a chance to run on the flat as a result. And, um, but anyway, he made up for it yeah. over, the, over the sticks. But I do think that um, he wouldn't have been disgraced at Epsom no. if he had run like he, you know, he had the, he had the, um, he had the uh, speed to win a triumph hurdle. And we know all about his stamina and uh, his perfect balance. Um, would have got him around Tattenham Corner, Epsom, the gradients, all the cambers, all that business. And um, anyway, key say, who knows? Just talk us through what he was like as a foal. Was he a standout in any way, shape yeah, or he, form? Yeah, um, of course it's easy nowadays <laughs> to say he was a standout, but he just had a, a, a wonderful look about him. I can still remember him, he was lying down and, and then he, he got up and um, great head, lovely personal white star. He just stood up and gazed like he's always like sort of lord of all he surveyed. He would do anything for you, you know, lead him in, bring him out. He, he was just, um, just very easy and um, beautiful mover, daisy cutter. And, um, but as I said to somebody, like if you took him on, and tried to bully him, you'd, you'd lose that battle. I remember Demi O'Byrne calling in here, the eminent veterinary surgeon, world-renowned judge, and a colleague of mine. We worked together in Coolmore. He called up here one time socially, and I said, come out and I'll show you this horse. And um, I remember what he said. He said, no matter what way you look at him, he's good. Yeah. It's a nice compliment, isn't it? He was sold then at the December sales. And who brought him? And John Ferguson bought him. He ended up anyway in Alzeroni's stable. And um, uh, he, um, he never ran a two. And then, uh, and then the stable was disbanded then at three. And uh, he, was, he, was, uh, he was sold. And then Nigel Hawke bought him. I, I thought there was something wrong with the horse when he was sold for so little, oh, you know, 10,000. I said, there must be something wrong. And then um, a solicitor friend of mine rang me on a Sunday morning. Um, to say that uh, the tiger was running in, in uh, Market Raisin. So the favorite was something like five to one on or something. And the tiger was 12s, 14s, and he wins three lengths. Okay. It was unbelievable. Wow. And uh, anyway, um, I got hold of Nigel Hawk, whom I didn't know, but anyway, I just uh, rang him up to congratulate him more, more than anything. I said, I was absolutely thrilled. Look, I said, I bred the horse. I'm absolutely thrilled uh, that he's won for you. And um, he said to me, he said, and this is, this is um, <clears throat> verbatim now. <clears throat> he said, this horse could be anything, he said. Um, there was nothing done with him. Wow. And um, he said that uh, he was jumping so beautifully at home, naturally, that I went the juvenile hurdle rather than the bumper route. Right. And then he asked me about the pedigree and that. And I said, look, I said, all I can tell you is to never stop, you know. 
Um, they just give everything that family. It's hard not to love him in a way. His name, Tiger, great yeah, name. Yeah, I mean, it's a great, it's a great name. Uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I, I call the mother Swiss roll because um, I, I, um, I sort of named her after my mother in the sense of um, all our mothers were great bakers, you know, <laughs> and, and they all made Swiss rolls. So I said, here, I'll call this one Swiss roll. And, um, but whoever, somebody said it was one of the girls in, in Sheikh Mohammed's uh, department that I don't know who now, but gave him Tiger, you know, called him Tiger, which is a fantastic name. Jerry only owns one mare and only breeds one horse a year. So the odds would have been stacked against him breeding a racing legend like the Tiger. Also, with the, with the small numbers, you can get, the dancers, you get very attached to them. And, you know, there are little idiosyncrasies and all that sort of thing. But you really get to love them and look after them. They're like the dogs here, you know, they're pets and you look after them. And, and um, if you get their temperaments right and uh, eating well, I think they have a lot going for them when they go into training then you decrease your chances of losing rather than increase your chances of winning because the odds are against you all the time. It should be a business, but I don't look at it like that, you know. It's, it's um, just companionship and all that. Come on. Come on. Do you prefer animals to, the, to people? Well, uh, it, it's... Um, animals tell you a lot about yourself. And, um, and, uh, and then there's no, generally there's no board meetings either, you know.